Hello and welcome to a Friday special episode of the Managing Madrid podcast. I'm your host, Keon Sabani. It is 7.30 a.m. Eastern, about 1.30 p.m. CET. We thought we were going to be early. I mean, we started one minute earlier than our scheduled time, but I was hoping we would have that awkward 30-minute, one-hour Champions League draw thing when people are just looking at each other. There's awkward presentations. No, I have been dreaming forever. Please give us the results right away. And they did it. So we got Mm -hmm. all of our quarterfinal draws. We got the team that we all wanted to avoid. Surprise, surprise. And also on the tougher side of the bracket, Manchester City. We're going to break this down, guys. Joining me right now, Mehdi Hassan, Jose Perez, Siddharth Ramsundar will be joining in a second as well. Wow. Initial reaction, Jose. This is what I get for using like a light blue shirt today. Like it's all your fault, buddy. <laughs> this, those are the those are the consequences. Yeah, it's gonna be so. In my opinion, the four best sides remaining in the competition were put on the same side of the draw, and then you have the other the other side with PSG, Barcelona, Leti, and Dortmund. That also gives a pretty good shot at a for a Leti um, for an Leti final. Oh, my God. Now you're getting way ahead of yourself, Jose. I tried to go final again. I, I don't know. If, you know what bothers me? If Barca somehow get past PSG, which is yeah. not the strongest team in this competition, they could stumble themselves into the final. Because if they meet Atletico in the semifinal, Atletico just rolled the red carpet out for Barca every time they play them. It's like, yo, here you go. Three points. You, you got it. You want to go to the Champions League final? Here's the red carpet, guys. You got it. Who do you want? You want us to take uh, Griezmann? You want to take Griezmann from us? You want us to take him back? What do you want? You want Luis Suarez off your books? <laughs> David Villa? Whatever you want. You got it, guys. Two more years so, of Xavi Hernandez if that happens, though. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> all right, Mehdi. Manchester City. How are we feeling? Yeah, as Jose said, that like uh, that's what he gets for wearing a light blue shirt. Uh, as many people know, I don't wear... Uh, the Real Madrid shirt on match days because terrible things happens if I do that. Apparently now terrible things happen if I wear the Real Madrid shirt on UCL draw days as well. Uh, yeah, I think I think the, this is the most difficult draw we could have gotten, not just in terms of the opponent, but also in terms of that we have to play the second leg at Manchester. And I am usually very frustrated at this thing that... Uh, uh, opponent atmospheres trouble Real Madrid the way they have uh, in in recent times, which didn't used to be the case. Really, uh, we saw what happened at Etihad last season. We we have been struggling at like Rio Vallecano away this season because of the atmosphere. Apparently, so I can only imagine things would be tougher uh, away at Manchester. And the whole draw, yeah, uh, it's it's just not optimal for Real Madrid. If the the winner of the tie from this game, Man- Manchester City, Real Madrid, I think the winner of this tie has a huge chance of making it into the final. Uh, if Real Madrid can beat Man City, I don't think Bayern or Arsenal should be an issue necessarily. The, just the psychological boost from that point on should carry us through into the final. And... Uh, at the same time, I don't think Arsenal or City in the Champions League is at a level. Oh, sorry, Arsenal or Bayern is at a level where they can beat Manchester City in a, in a semi-final. On the other hand, like apart from Dortmund, all the teams that I probably hate most uh, are on the other side of the bracket. Uh, uh, Barcelona, Atleti, semi-final would be terrible. Uh but I think we are kind of sleeping on PSG. PSG has has been actually better. I think a lot of lot of things regarding PSG has been related to how they performed in the group stage early on against Newcastle. But since then, they have actually come back stronger. And uh, like people thought, the uh, Real Sociedad are going to create much bigger problems for them, but they eventually couldn't. Mbappe is in good form, so uh, if Mbappe cannot score another hat-trick against Barcelona. Uh, friendship temporarily over with him. I, I think if you had to, like, if we could trade places with any team right now in this entire bracket, where Atletico is right now is ideal because you got mm-hmm. Dortmund, 
And in the semifinals, you get Barca or PSG. And then from there, like I, I think you'd put yourself in a good position. However, sometimes, and just to push back on your uh, idea, Sid, or or just analysis, whatever, that you know we struggled away in Vallecas. Like the thing with Real Madrid is sometimes they need to be against a stronger opponent to actually wake up and get the best out of themselves. We kind of needed it in 2022. And we always know that psychologically, for whatever reason, it's just different heading into Vallecas or or El Sadar or wherever in Spain that's just difficult away against an inferior team. And we struggle against those teams more. And sometimes we just elevate our games when we when we face the big test. Sid, is this what you expected to wake up to? No, I really wanted to wake up to Dortmund. <laughs> yeah. I really wanted to wake up to Dortmund. Um, but hey, now at least if they if they go back to back, we, we have ourselves to blame if we don't stop them. Um, yeah. It's it's in our hands to protect our record. We we gotta protect um I'm you know, I'm I'm glad Arsenal and Bayern got each other. I think that's a new tie we haven't really seen. This is more of a European classic of the last few years. And then PSG have a good chance to make the final. I they're a pretty strong team. I think Arsenal or Bayern can beat Man City, though. I think that's overrating Man City. Very good team, but their whole dynamics this season are different. Um, firstly, Kyle Walker has staked a larger place in the dressing room. Like once he renewed last year, Pep spent that famous two, three hour like dinner with him where he convinced Walker to stay. I mean, he convinced Walker to stay for this tie, but in the process, he allowed Kyle Walker to grow a little out of control in terms of how often he plays, his role in the team. Kyle Walker is, like, good, but um, I do think some of the city's best games come offensively, especially come without him, and he's played a lot. They also have a brutal tie running. Like, when is the first leg? Are the dates out? Um, yeah. So I'll bring them up in a second. Okay, but, I mean, they... City are in a tight spot in the Premier League. It's not the worst time to play them. They play Arsenal March 31st. So, like, if there's a time they're going to struggle, um, I think it's going to be now. Like, this isn't the same city as last year. I think um, we definitely have a closer dynamic. It just sucks that the second leg is at the Etihad. Because um, our players are not, like, in some crazy form where we can go and say we're going to go beat City. It's just City aren't in the form of last year. They're not, like... I don't think they're the same team that beat us 4-0 at the Etihad and um, no more Gundogan. I know Kovacic is there, but they're they're slightly worse. So I guess that's the saving grace. What do you think, Jose? Uh, so on the comment, so on the commentary and all that. So I do think that City are in a, a bit of a weaker position that they than they than they were last year. Like, and you can see that. Both eye test and the underlyings kind of confirm that, like they're creating a bit less than, than, than last year too. So it is true that it is a bit, I like I find more a bit more holes in this city team than I've uh, than I did last year. Uh, that that being said, in general, their for of course their form in Champions League up to now has been rock solid. The question is, of course who kind of challenged him. Uh, uh, and in the end, of, of, of course, they dealt, they dealt better with that Leipzig team that we did. But again, group stage performance versus knockout stage performance is always a different matter. Uh, but in general, I do think that you can find, and Liverpool also showed that in the past week, and you can find more holes in this City team than you could in last season. So that is true. And also as far... As uh, as both Mahedi and Sid mentioned, uh, perform PSG had, I think it's final. Like, and this is not the first time I've seen this happen with Luis Enrique. That second half of the season, it starts coming together again. So it, it start things start coming together. Their second leg performance against Real Sociedad, I found very strong, and not just by what they did with the ball, by the goals, but also just. The, pre the way they got everyone to press in a coherent way was quite... Uh, I was quite impressed by it. So it does look like P like PSG is waking up on time for the knockouts. I, I have to like uh, be sort of the resident pessimist here regarding Man City, Real Madrid. I'll, I'll say this. 
If I remember correctly, the last time we faced City before the first leg, I think the sentiment was similar that when we actually beat them uh, with the Rodrigo heroics and in injury time the year prior to that, uh, before getting thrashed 4-0, we were actually saying that Madrid, we are in a better spot than last year when we had to pull up all those heroics to beat City. We actually played well at the Bernabeu as well with, with that Vinicius goal. After uh, Kevin De Bruyne's goal, Man City got back into that game. But we were feeling uh, better than last year, uh, even last season when, when we went to Manchester. But then we saw what happened. And my, my main issue with facing Man City is that the things that we saw in Manchester last season, I'm not sure how many of those problems have been mitigated or have been really solved from a tactical perspective at Real Madrid this season, even with the inclusion of Jude Bellingham, because City are still going to set up the same way. They're going to have three center backs, two defensive midfielders, and then four midfielders and ha Haaland up top. Uh, personnel doesn't really matter. They are going to set up that way at, at in Manchester. They are going to press really, really, really high uh that we couldn't just beat and get out of last year so i'm i'm not entirely sure how well positioned we are to do that against that kind of setup this year and also guys i think we are forgetting something very important half of our starting 11 could be suspended for the second leg yeah that this is a huge problem actually yeah. I, I i was you know bring up the super chat really quick from zafri jude vinnie kama chu are one yellow from suspension. That's a huge, I mean, we, so it's okay to be the pessimist Mahidi because you're actually being very realistic here. I, I kind of, I think, wow, where to start, man. There's so many things going through my head right now. Starting with this comment, I guess, from the super chat, we ticked off all the boxes of how to make this the most difficult Champions League run possible because we got the tougher side of the bracket. We got probably the best team in the competition. I know they're struggling in the Premier League relatively to what they usually do, but I think this team's ceiling is a different thing when we're talking about going to the Etihad for a game or playing them over two legs. Um, so not only we ticked off those difficult boxes, difficult side of the bracket, difficult team. We're also the third, the third uh, box we ticked was the second leg away from home. We have to go to the Etihad, and to think that any or m more than one of these players would get a yellow card in the first leg, and then we have to go to the Etihad without these guys. That's that's obviously concerning, um, especially if it's someone like like Jude or Vin. I mean, any of these four players. Who am I kidding? I mean, we went to the, we we played without Chu many at the Etihad last season, and Jude would kind of take the Benzema role of last season where he was struggling and he was out of form, and Kyle Walker defended Vinicius brilliantly over the two legs despite Vinicius's goal in the first leg. To me, it kind of comes down to how well are we going to play at the Etihad? If we reflect on the the last two times we faced City, so uh, in 2022, 4-3 at the Etihad, the first leg. It was a miracle we only lost that game 4-3. You guys remember that, right? So yeah. we somehow went to the Bernabeu down only one goal. Um, the Bernabeu was was fine if you consider like the last 20 minutes of the game plus extra time. Before that, it was bad too. But at least at the Bernabeu, we were able to put it together. Last season, they dominated us in the first half. We scored a goal, 1-1, heading into halftime. In the second half, we were a better team. We were better than them in the second half. And that, I think, Mahedi gave us the optimism heading into the Etihad. Like, okay, so we are in a better position than last year because we actually played really well. We have everything it takes to beat this team. And then we went to the Etihad and everything went wrong. And we can discuss what went wrong, that what we can fix for this season. But the Etihad is a huge beast that we have to tackle. And I remember asking Pep this last year, like, because after the 4-0, I asked him, like, so, because, by the way, I was so deluded. I was such a deluded Maridista last season that at halftime, when we were down 2-0 at the Etihad and we were getting absolutely smoked, I was like, we got this. We got this. We're going to figure this out. And then we got just wiped away 4-0. So I asked him, like, how come in the first leg 
Real Madrid were able to regroup at halftime and play better in the second half. But today they couldn't do that. And he said, in the Champions League, playing at home is all the difference. The Etihad um, is is way more comfortable for us. We're just better at the Etihad. And for Real Madrid, you know, they're better at their home stadium. In the Champions League specifically, not domestically, Champions League specifically, being at home really matters. And I think we saw that even with Atletico uh, a couple of days ago. So to me, it really comes down to how we can do at the Etihad. And then I think we can use this as a launching pad to discuss what went wrong last season and what can we avoid uh, this season. One on, The only player yeah. on Sydney who's due for suspension is Ruben Diaz on two yellow cards. Why did four of our guys get two yellows? God damn it. But only one of them. And Vinicius, now, now the Vinicius yellow looks... Even bad. Although, like he was like poked really hard in his in his cheek uh, before pushing the Leipzig player, but uh, uh, Vinny and Jude Yellows would be would be terrible. Yeah. Brahim Diaz versus Phil Foden, the the Man City boys going up against each other. <laughs> um, well, I mean, one thing that went wrong last year, I guess I'll just put out, and then whoever who was gonna go, Jose, but I'll just say. I mean, we had no connection between midfield and attack outside Vinicius, like, dribbling at guys, it felt like. Um, it was late. Like, it was Benzema after a season of ups and downs. He wasn't he wasn't the invincible Benzema from two years ago. He wasn't even close. And um, we also had dealt with so many injuries. I don't even think Chuameni was, like, a clear starter by the City tie. So we're a much stronger team in that facet. Jude and Brahim between the lines add a completely different dynamic to what we had last year. Like the way we can play out of their press, I think has improved a lot. The issue is what we saw against Leipzig means, you know, maybe the whole season has been a fluke is what we think, but just strictly from a dynamics perspective, we have Jude and Brahim between the lines. I think Vinny is a better player. Like, you know, a whole year without Benzema makes you a different footballer. <laughs> and, um, no, it's just a different dynamic he's used to. I don't think he'll get abused by Kyle Walker nearly as easily. I think he'll fight Kyle Walker. Um, you know, the I think we might need to see Camavinga at left back to really get the most out of this time. I'm worried about Ferlan Mendy at left back trying to pro- help Vinny progress. But we have Chuabeni in midfield. Um, Fed is fit. He's not like last year where he was kind of half injured. Um, and we're not going to start Cruz and Modric together. You know, there are some advantages we got this year. What do you guys think? You do not do not underestimate Carlo Ancelotti for not starting Cruz and Modric away at Manchester City. He said, don't do it just yet. And, well, I mean, yeah, in, in, on paper, he shouldn't start Cruz and Modric away, but he might need to because of the suspensions or whatnot. Uh, again, I'm, I'm like, I would, I would like to debate on this, like, how do we solve the connection issues that you mentioned between midfield and attack? And I would like to hear from all of you that how do we see those issues being mitigated this season? Because the thing is, as Sid mentioned, like Brahim and Jude are not going to start this game. Rodrigo and Jude are going to start this game. And I can see that Rodrigo, Vinny and Jude more centrally pinning, trying to pin uh, Manchester City's three defenders away. Uh, that 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 could be something that might open some space up for us in in midfield, and we will probably need like better performances from the likes of Fede and Kamavinga in the midfield because Kamavinga was pretty awful in the Manchester City tie last year. His his touches were all off. Uh, his orientations were all over the place. In the second uh, leg. In, in the second leg, yeah. In the second yeah. leg, first leg, he 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 was great. He provided the assist for Vinicius. Actually, so uh, if if those issues get solved, I can see uh, I was doing better probably. But yeah, I'm just I'm just so skeptic about Madrid doing well against that smothering, smothering, smothering press of Manchester City. That that still gives me like PTSD. That's all. <laughs> um, can I make a quick point on that? Like, it's interesting to reflect on Kamavinga last season versus Manchester City because. In the first leg, if you remember, he defended Bernardo Silva brilliantly. Like, Mm -hmm. we were all in awe. Like, he's playing left back, and he completely owned that duel. And he had that amazing ball carry sequence. The second leg, he he got owned by Bernardo Silva. And to be fair, 
everyone got owned by everyone. <laughs> like, if, and everyone, apart from Courtois, like everyone basically was terrible. And I think like, look, it would be crazy, I think, for Ancelotti to make those same mistakes again. I, I, my connection dropped for a second, so I, I missed some of Sid's monologue about what, what went wrong last season, so I apologize if I repeat anything, but Kamavinga playing left back in that game, too many on the bench. Those two things, I think, were really... And, and Rudiger on the bench, who was amazing against Holland in the first leg. That was huge. I assume he'll be on the field. He will be on the field if he's healthy for both legs. That will change things. Um, my... Look, I don't know. This is complete. This is what I'm about to say is pure delusion. So please take it with a grain of salt. Maybe Militao will come back and is Militao for the quarterfinals. And if you have a Rudiger Militao pairing at center back plus two many as your DM, that changes things a lot for me. Because one of the problems was we had no. I agree no- with that. Like, I think. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. So I think, uh, like, if I look at the lineup, say, last year, okay, Kamavinga, who's a good player to help you with build-up, but then had certain weaknesses to sp- defending the spaces behind him. Then you had an Alaba, who is there, was there for ball progression, but all, but also, like, has, uh, has weaknesses defending the box. Militao, who went, frankly, into the second part of the season, like, usually what's happened with Militao throughout seasons is that he had, like, Six months that were like that, like for two years, it's been like this, like six months at like top class level. And then he has like two, three months per season where it's just awful. And then usually those have those have coincided with the knockouts. So that's kind of an that's been kind of annoying. Um, it, it could maybe maybe it's a completely different dynamic now that he's coming back from injury. And then Carvajal also wasn't hitting the levels last year that he was that he, he's hitting now you add to that uh Tramini, and i do think that if you say have a lineup with i have a feeling that ancelotti instead of go like having camavinga there has advantages in build up like one of the big questions going into this tie will be do you put camavinga or do you put mandi obviously camavinga will have an advantage in getting through the press um but if you have Mendy there with Rudiger, with Militao, with Carvajal in his current level, and Tramini, I do think that's a massive improvement in the quality of your of your defending in and around the box compared to what Real Madrid had last season. Do I have hope that this team will consistently make it to the Manchester City press? No, not really. But I do think that at least if your box defending is working well, that puts you in a in a situation when you can survive the attacks a bit better, and then you have and then you have all the all, all the guys up front come up with like a brilliant counter. But that's gonna be. I think we have to be realistic in that it's not. This is not gonna be a a tie where Real Madrid can outplay or outpass or outpossess Manchester City. This is gonna be a bit of staying a bit deeper and then going on on counters. The good news, I think, is that um, both Jeremy Doku and definitely Julian Alvarez are way worse options at the left wing in a big, high-profile Champions League tie than Jack Grealish. Because Jack Grealish, I thought, he he just offers them control. He's a bit like Iniesta played out wide sometimes. The way he just can slow the game down for them, one, two touches away from wherever the defender is making his challenge. Doku is a downgrade in terms of control. He's still good one-on-one, but if we get Fede Carvajal covering... Doku is not going to control the game like Grealish. And if they play Julian Alvarez, man, we better do what Liverpool did to them, but worse. Like, that guy cannot keep the ball for his life outside the striker position. I've never... His performance against Liverpool was embarrassing. And, um, you know, Grealish's injury is huge. He's out right now. And I don't know if he'll be back for this. I know he's out for the rest of the month. If he's not back for this tie, it's a big deal. And he won't be there for Arsenal City at the Etihad on March 31st, I don't think. Which also, if they lose that, they're going to be under a lot of pressure coming into our tie, even if they don't win that. Actually, them winning that tie is where the Premier League flips for them. If they don't win that game, their odds for winning the Premier League go down a lot. And that's about nine days before... I know, ideally, it would have been like three days. That would have been perfect. But unfortunately, it's nine days before the first leg. Um, 
just a thought. Like, no Grealish changes a lot, in my opinion. He was very good against us last year. Go ahead, Kim. Well, just quickly, the, the point about the schedule is interesting because I'm looking at it now. So, before the first leg, Manchester City has five games. We only have two. From because now, of the Copa del Rey break. <laughs> that's right. So, thank God we are eliminated from that competition. Also, because I'm dead ass tired of trying to find illegal streams for Copa del Rey in Canada because they don't they don't <laughs> have the rights here. So thank God we're eliminated from Copa del Rey. We have two games between Manchester City, including an entire nine days break be- before the match. So we have an- we have Athletic, and then we have nine days before the Manchester City first leg. Here's City schedule: Newcastle tomorrow in the FA Cup. Away to Brighton at some point. It's uh, postponed. The time is to be determined. Then they host Arsenal on the 31st. Then they have to host Aston Villa. And then three days before the Real Madrid game, they go away to Crystal Palace. Wait, wait. They play Aston Villa and Arsenal? Oh, my yeah. God. That's huge. Those are like the two teams other than Liverpool you'd want them to play. That's ridiculous. And three more games? Oh, my God. That just changed my whole projection of this time. I'm going to be honest. Like, Football isn't played in some bubble. It's play, it's a physical sport. Oh, my God. Like, they're going to be so – like, just think about it. Fight. Like, we get nine full days off, and they're coming in like Arsenal, Aston Villa. I don't care who you rotate. This Premier League is brutal. It's brutally hard. Aston Villa's midfield will chase you around like a hungry pack of dogs. They're going to be tired. I'm, I'm excited. They're- Sid, man, you got to stop with all these outlandish takes. You, you, yes. said, we, we, you said Leipzig were trash. What, did, what else did you say? Did you, you said Inter would beat Atletico. Can you just stop the jinxing for one second? Also, uh, what's so Man City are facing Arsenal right before us. Is that what I'm say, seeing? Or Aston Villa right? Oh, before? Palace. No. It's Arsenal, oh, Palace. Palace. Yeah, Palace. Crystal Palace, Palace three days before our game. Crystal Palace. That, okay, so he, he'll, like, he'll play like under 13... Manchester City squad versus Crystal Palace. Yeah, or just his like three billion dollar <laughs> squ- uh, bench and that he has. Also, what I want from Madrid, what I was getting to was, I hope for the life of me that Carlo plays a brave offensive game at the Bernabeu and just like throws the kitchen sink at Manchester City at the Bernabeu. If we are playing for another like <clears throat> draw at the Bernabeu or like. We're playing for a one-goal win, and we eventually draw because of some crazy Manchester City goal. Uh, that's just not going to cut it. I think uh, we saw what Liverpool did to them when they like yeah. pressed them higher. So the, these these setups, the ones like Manchester City and ones like Arsenal, they look really scary when they like press you high and they pr- pr- uh, press you aggressively, but. If you even try to do it remotely to them, they kind of kind of lose it. And Real Madrid actually has all those tools to do it to them. Although Real Madrid doesn't have that yeah. scheme at Real Madrid, but we have very good midfielders who can hold on to the ball even under pressure. So bring that line high up at the Bernabeu, uh, like make a scary tifo at the beginning of the game, make it noisy, <laughs> do whatever, like <laughs> do whatever, like have Carlo poke a pep in the eye or something, do crazy things, uh, hire Jose Mourinho. He, he's he's free right now for the pre-match press conference, rile pep up. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Mourinho to do that 2011 monologue at, at the press room again. Uh, so do all those things at the Bernabeu, make things difficult, try to get... Uh, a good result out of the Bernabeu and don't play it safe at the Bernabeu for a draw or something. I think that will give us a better chance because, yeah, we, we don't as like we don't really have much to lose here rather than uh, laying the red carpet for City to repeat our record. We so we if we want to preserve our record, I think uh, that's that's the way that we should go. Also, it's a joke. They're not starting Cruz and Modric together. Like that's not happening. We can joke about it, but. Um... You know. No, no, they, they, they're not starting on um, like tactically, but I'm worried about the suspensions. Like, if Chuameni is suspended, or even yeah. both Chuameni and Kamavinga are suspended, it can happen by force. Like, last year it didn't yeah. happen by force, uh, last year it happened by choice. But this yeah. year, Carlo might not have that choice, is what I'm saying. Like, you could 
I I'm, I think I trust Vinny not to get a yellow because of his playing style. Most of his yellow cards are for descent. So if he just doesn't um, do those things, he should be safe. Kamavinga is who I'm worried about because Kamavinga like breathes oxygen and it's a yellow card. He could like go in like for like five slide tackles that are completely clean as a whistle and it's a yellow card. And he gets so many undeserved yellow cards. Uh, the point about being aggressive at the burning bar, I think is important. I don't know if I see Carlo doing it. Carlo's track record is conservatism, especially in bigger games and just keeping it cagey and relying on transition attacks. Having said that our best periods in the champions league in 2022 all came through our moments of aggressive pressing. Um, even if it was a 20 minute blitz, the, the teams were just completely off guard. He saved those typically for the end of the of games where opponents were tired. Um, and if we if we but if if we're to go by the first leg of last season, our second half performance, we can we can safely say that we are going to have that period at the Bernabeu, I assume. And it's important, like because like if you want to maximize, like maximizing the scoreline at the Bernabeu is important to me. Like you said, Mahedi, it's kind of like when. Yes. You know, Sid, you know, you're talking about when when Jokic sits for the Nuggets. You want to maximize the non-Jokic minutes, right? If you're an opponent, you want to make sure you take advantage of when he's not in the field. The Bernabeu is kind of the same. You want to make sure that while you're there, you get a good scoreline heading back to the Etihad. So the margin of error at least increases a little bit in the second leg. Um, I also thought it would be just kind of quickly we could address this. Uh, not address, but just go over it. I'm going to share my screen really quick. Uh. Oh, and just a quick stat that popped up. Uh, Real Madrid have only won one of their last six UEFA Champions League games against Manchester City. One draw, four losses. And I yeah. think the one win that they're citing as a win is actually a injury time win, which doesn't really count as a win on paper. That's still a draw. Right. It's yeah. not, it wasn't in regulation. Yeah, so we, we haven't won <laughs> once in the last six games. The last time we beat Man City, who was our coach? Zidane in 2016. Well, that, was the bail. Yeah, that was the bail. That was the bail. Own goal, whatever. Own goal, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that Manchester City team was a completely different Yeah, team. yeah, that was a Manuel Pellegrini's Manchester City, yeah. completely different. Uh, anyway, so I just brought this up. This was, this was what was on the field last season. So no defensive anchor. The Cruz, Modric, and pairing in Champions League is, this is empirically back when they're together. Those are our worst minutes in the past few years. Sorry to say, when they're paired together. Um, no too many Kamavinga left back. I think so. The the domino of not having too many there was that you had to put Kamavinga here. Um, and I don't even think many was Mendy injured that day. I can't remember if he wasn't or if it was just a technical decision. I can't necessarily remember that one, but uh, one of our problems in the second leg last season was that we had no one between the lines. Like we had, we were pinned so deep. We weren't even able to get the ball to Vinny or Benzema and Rodrigo was a ghost that game. So uh, I think having Kamavinga in midfield would help tremendously in a tie like this, where you need someone to show between the lines, you need some outlets you need some ball carrying. And I don't think Kamavinga being as pinned as he was that day and with Modric and Alaba helping him in that left half space, like he was getting cooked and the entire structure was not there to support him nor anyone else. And I think that was a huge problem. So um, the other variable is, of course, is you need you need Rodrigo to punish these guys. Like if you, if you have Walker and everyone else focused on Vinny, you need you need Rodrigo to pull people away, use his gravity, make some good third man runs, off ball runs. We need we need a we need a really great version of Rodrigo in this tie, in my opinion, to succeed as well. Um, yeah, it's uh, a bit what happens with Manchester City. Actually, the, did the uh, did the same kind of last year, where it's Alan's gravity pulled everyone towards him, and then that creates more space for all the other City attackers. Because in the end. Alan didn't score in that tie, if I recall correctly. Like right. it's everyone else who scored because they had a lot more space to operate in due to Holland's gravity. And that's kind of what 
Real Madrid has to do on the opposite end, where like you take advantage of the gravity of of especially Vini, but also Bellingham, and see and then make a bit more room for everyone else. And like you said, I think it would be it would be very nice if Rodrigo could profit from that. He posted a wink emoji right after the draw, so uh, he he's also he has already thrown the kitchen sink at Manchester City. He knows it's <laughs> it's over yeah. for him if he doesn't score in these two games. <laughs> yeah, Jude is also a bit. I think Jude is a different proposition. Like, um, just watch Jude playing for Dortmund against Man City like years ago. He was amazing. He was one of the best players on the pitch for Dortmund. So I'm excited to see what he can do for us. Um. You know, there are a lot of things that are different for City, too. Like, De Bruyne is, you know, a little rusty, you could say. He missed half the season. Grealish, oh, he, oh. He's been unreal in the in yeah. the minutes he's gotten. Like He, he is incredible. Um, It's just the whole City dynamic is different this year. Just go ask. I mean, you know, I think it's, it's even just deeper than the non-penalty XG. Like, I think there's some issues with Kyle Walker playing too much. Um, Rodri's good, but Kovacic is good. There's no Gundogan, who's a bit of, like, Kovacic with end product he could do a little bit of everything um Nunez hasn't really come off for them so they're not the same they're not as deep as last year and um I'm just looking at this fixture list man like who knows um who's going to be tired by that first by that first leg and um yeah I'm excited I mean I mean Arsenal Arsenal and Aston Villa like I I really didn't realize that City's schedule is so bad because if you think about it Let's say we play an easy team and face City in the semifinals. After so, at that point, they would have had four or five games to recover points after the Arsenal and Aston Villa games, and they wouldn't have we wouldn't have as big a rest advantage. Like, if you guys remember the Atletico game, we played Atletico after a draining Super Cup tie, um, and then they beat us in the Copa. I think we'll see some similarities. Like, it's hard. I mean, I also think that was one of the reasons we beat them in 21-22 because they were in such a tight title race with Liverpool and I think those last 50, like th- that last 10 minute burst was just partly a result of um a slight mental sharpness we had from finishing the league in advance. Um I guess we only finished the league like 3 days before, but the league was de facto done for a while. It was so de facto done. last season like so I mean the Part of the reason why the, it's interesting to look at Manchester City's schedule and their heavy schedule when they face us this season is that they really are in the thick of things in the Premier League. They need to win all those games, right? What was it like last season? Was it dusted when they faced us? Faced us? I can't remember. Last season, the Premier it, League, uh, we were definitely dusted at that time. time. Yeah. yeah. When, when they beat Arsenal the second time, it was dusted. Let's see. Um, Manchester City versus Arsenal. I just seem to remember that they were um, pretty focused on us last season. They were. Um, April 26th, they slapped Arsenal 4-1. Um, and then they played us on May. It was May. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was over. Saliba was hurt. It was a wrap by the time they played us. There was no opportunity. Um, yeah. By the way, guys, Rodrigo just edited his tweet. To what? <laughs> what is it? Up, you he, gotta keep it. Everyone knows he, the edit history. They he's, have he's, he's, he's watching the podcast, Kian. I'm telling you. Oh, uh, sure. as, as soon as he we talked us. about, as soon as we talked about his emoji, so he he changed the like. Uh, it's kind of like a, it's a prayer and fire instead yeah, of a yeah, wink. Yeah, he he instead changed the emoji to a prayer. <laughs> if I'm for a wink, we're gonna slap you like we got this to like God help us. <laughs> That's actually a meme for sure. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> he actually deleted it. He didn't even edit it. He just deleted it. No, no, no. He he did he did edit it. People like there's a different version. So it, what do you oh, this one says only one minute ago? No, no, because it shows you the latest version of it. Oh, it says uh, edited, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I don't, I'm not familiar with Elon's uh Elon's new everyone system. and everyone in the press comments in Spanish is like, what are you doing changing this? You just edited it. Like everyone press in the comments is also yeah. mentioning. And What's apparently that? people are oh, too fast. Edited. People are too fast to find these things out. Edit Someone... his... Oh, there we go. Oh, he has there three versions. <laughs> oh, oh he, changed it. he changed the skin color of the, the prey emoji. Um, no, but go scroll down. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that emoji change. <laughs> Unbelievable. Best and- Rodrigo, when it's up, it's up. Everyone sees the whole world sees it. There's no point in deleting, editing. You just leave it up, man. 
I fully expect him to like then further come up with like an apology letter <laughs> that uh, uh, I did not want to post this or something like that. Anyway, someone posted that he apparently did the same thing last year as well uh, after drawing City. And <laughs> someone said like he me. edited it. No, no, no. Year? Like he oh. he 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 tweeted something like this. So mm. yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're behind on some super chats. If you guys, uh, yeah, I'm sure the super going. chats will probably take us in the direction we need to go to. I assume. Uh, Nikolai Mihatovic says, "Holy shit, that's all I have to say." Have faith, Nikolai. Uh, we took that one. Zeppelin says, "I'm very afraid that Ancelotti is gonna have a similar approach, just like last year." I hate being such a pessimist, but I have no faith. I, oh, we kind of welcome to my that. world, man. Yeah, that's Mehedi. This is Mehedi. <laughs> Mehedi logged into his burner, gave us a donation, and, and left a comment. <laughs> um, Adar Zalukovic says, Madrid could have second leg at home due to having two games in Madrid in the first leg within 24 hours. UEFA have adjusted this in the past with Manchester. Oh, we are not going to be that Madrid side. I can promise you that like <laughs> Seferin doing that favor to real madrid club day football <laughs> forget about it wait so yeah, when is and i think and i think arancha has an update for this so she said like she just had a tweet out that it's like wefa is telling us at to in cope deportes that uh it's the local authorities who will have the last word on this. So basically, Madrid police will decide whether they have the capacity or not. For Florentino, this. you have oh, one job. No, so, God, guys, this is huge. It's on the same so day. Guys, Madrid doesn't yes. have the police force. Send a petition. Get the petition going for managing Madrid. Need, no, no, need, no, need no, flow to pull the contacts in government. Oh, <laughs> I didn't realize this. I don't think. I think you guys are underestimating the problem here. It's on the same day. Madrid is going to be think... insane. No, Are they it's, really scheduling I, Yeah, I, I, I understand that. But what I'm skeptic about is that, yeah, again, I'm, I'm going to be the pessimistic guy <laughs> regarding this one as well. I don't think we can pull this off. But yeah, Flo, get your police contacts out, man. If there was ever a time, like send a dead horse's head to the police chief's house while he's sleeping, do something. Where, like, so I'm actually curious though, like, what is the advantage of playing the second leg at home? Like, beyond, like, you know, okay, okay, I'll tell you extra time, obviously, like, if it goes to extra time, but to me, what it is that because the away goals are now out, what I think is at in the first leg, both teams are a bit conservative with their approach. No team wants to, like, uh, have an outlandish disadvantage going into the second leg, so. That could happen with City as well. They might be a bit conservative with their approach, a bit, uh, not necessarily deeper, but a uh, bit, bit more defensive than usual, a bit more cautious, uh, just, you know, to not to concede too many. And in the second leg with the atmosphere and everything, if if that's the case, if we don't have a big, big disadvantage like we had, uh, didn't have in 2022 as well, we only had a one goal deficit, those things can be pulled off or like chalked off really quick with the home advantage uh but yeah with with the second uh, what i'm trying to say is the second leg is usually more open for either both of the teams or at least one team but the first leg is usually where the both of the teams will probably take it a bit conservatively yeah i agree um also update to the rodrigo saga the tweet is now fully deleted yeah i noticed (laughs) What I time is it in Spain? Crazy. Is he like drunk or something? It's I'm one. Sure it's training, one so. here in Europe, so he should. It's a bit it, early. It, to do you guys? Do you guys drunk. see that meme where like Michael Scott is telling uh, Toby that I will kill you uh, like like this? I think uh, Ancelotti just sent that GIF to Rodrigo. <laughs> this is the worst. <laughs> I absolutely love StreamYard. You can just do random things like that. Um, do we want to talk about the other ties at all, or any any thoughts on City, Jose? Have you been following them? Like, they've... hold on. Let's finish the super chats first. Let's finish super chats sure, sure. first. We're yeah. behind. All right, and then we'll we'll do that. Um, uh, but the the hotel situation in Madrid is going to be insane. Dortmund and 
Manchester. Oh man, a party in it's Madrid. Gonna, it's gonna be it's gonna be expensive and it's gonna be very very busy. That so day. so Jose, the thing is, if local police decides that they can handle both Madrid games, can be there in the second leg at the same time. Uh, I so, well, I also want to check like. Do they like are really both games scheduled on the same day, or is it going to be one after the other? Whatever the case, like twenty four hours is still okay. Well, right now they're yeah. both scheduled on April 9th. Oh, and she also said like on other occasions they have been played. So as long as it's not on the yes. same night, I think yeah, we we have yeah, all hope is. I'd possible. agree. I'd agree. I'd almost assume that if they are going to be like just. One on Tuesday, one on Wednesday. I think it will likely still go through unless Flo pulls the contacts. Yeah, who are we kidding here? All right, what's the next super chat? Uh, (laughs) Oscar, uh, just a donation. Thank you, my man. Appreciate you. Nehemi Balukidi says, when are we starting the fasting so we can beat City? We We need a week long fast. Thanks for this, guys. Love hearing Jose around. Love having Jose around. Uh, hey, thank you. Dry fast? Are, we, are we talking wet or dry fast? I, I could do seven day a week long dry fast might be tough, but it might take a couple days of dry fasting to beat City. You know, it's a little more effective. Um, Ramadan guys, ends literally on the day of the first on the day, day of the first. Oh, it's on Eid. My Eid is just r- ruined. <laughs> Mehdi, this is not about you. As, 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 as long no. as our players are, are, are our players fasting, will Rudiger be fasting that day? Uh, he That's the last day. That's the last day, yeah. That means it's, we're in charge of bringing joy to all Muslims on Eid. It's our Real Madrid's responsibility now. Okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, Eid is going to be ruined for all Muslim Real Madrid fans. We should all Muslims. fast that day in support <laughs> to, to enhance the black magic all around the world. You guys remember fasting. when um, two years ago we we came on and we op- I at least I opened saying, let's speak this win in ex- into existence over Man City. I remember yeah. that pretty clearly. Um, Obviously, last year I didn't share the optimism. This year, we'll give it a couple of weeks. You know, we'll see on the pregame show how how we're feeling, how the energy's going around. Oh, by the way, we face Barcelona after the second leg. Yes. In Whatever. City. I don't care. Okay. The league will be over by <laughs> yeah. then. Like Bar- Barcelona will be like in a crisis, and Mbappe would have put six past them by then. Like, when... stop it, Sid man. Stop it. <laughs> stop. <laughs> they'll be they'll be trying to bring Luis Enrique back and then like there'll be a like you know Xavi will go and have a dramatic press conference man, man I don't I don't trust these Barcelona coaches like uh, Luis Enrique might as well just like give up give up because like his his the Barcelona team they're yeah. facing I don't trust Lucho or Atletico to, yeah. to I think they're both gonna roll the red carpet for Barca and imagine a final between Man City and Barcelona and Pep's like crying in the press conference oh I can't like I'm, I'm gonna play my under 15s because it's against my Barcelona <laughs> and then Messi will win the Ballon d'Or after and then they hold hands and lift the trophy together like the media. Yeah. I don't Ajax. I don't have the stomach for a Manchester City Barcelona final. I ooh, I'm Thank think God I'll Arsenal be on holiday. I'll, I'll be on holiday in a Caribbean island by then possibly. So I'll be on holiday too, but you know that's where you know you don't you don't trash Arsenal. You don't hate on Arsenal for days like these because you know we need Arsenal to come through if we don't come through or we need Harry Kane to come through. We need tactics, Tommy, to come through. I, I guess that's where um, I think Arsenal might beat Bayern. And um, no, I, I don't. Th- I strongly disagree. This is a harder title race than last year. Arguably a harder title race than two years ago for Man City. And um, you know, a very defensive unit. And this is a tough European path. Like Arsenal are a very legitimate team. They they're good. I, I mean, they they won both their head to head games. I know City weren't hundred percent in either tie, but um. I, I strongly disagree. Man City is not some lock to win the title. Um, you know, I, I think people are just underrating Arsenal and Bayern, to be honest. Jose, okay. what do you think of Man City? Well, are you before, are you, are you referring that, to the super chat, Sid? Yes, the super chat. You might as well give Man City a trophy. Jose, what do you think of Man City? Have you kept up with their strange, like, deformation of identity this season? Have you been watching them at all? It's so... So I think Pep's focus... In, to me, the tactical story of Manchester City this year is that... Pep in his his newest, let's just say, trend in the search for super control or what 
or world domination, however we want to put it, is that he really wants his players and teams to win one one versus one duels. And that's why he put like four center backs at the back so that they can win the most 1v1 duels on defense. And then this market, they lost Gundogan and then they went for like the dribbly for all the dribbly boys that can win that can win those one will be one duels in attack applies to Mateus Nunes applies to Kovacic uh, and it applied also to having Jeremy Doku there they are getting Savinho which is going to be another uh, another nice dribbly boy so he's filling up the squad in in the attacking phase with dribbly boys which is nice which I can imagine that for especially for this Premier League that just is. This year we've seen like a kind of like how would I po- call it Bundesligification of the Premier League where everything is just getting more fast paced, more come and go, and I can see why it helps them in that context. But it is true that it is a Manchester City that controls games a bit worse than in previous years. So the ca- like it's just not as strong. Everything is going so quickly that sometimes it doesn't give the time for the team to or to be as organized as it was in previous years and counter press the way they did before which is why for example Liverpool could do a game like the one they did against Manchester City and like and it's and and you can see, and even teams like I was watching a Manchester City Burn, a Burnmouth like a few weeks ago where they also found like good counter attacking opportunities against Manchester City because of that so that's kind of the tactical story of Manchester City this year they have more dribbly players in attack, but that also means more more ball losses in areas, uh, in more compromised areas compared to previous seasons. Yeah, I'd say, and that's why Grealish has taken such a big importance because um, he just offers so much control from the left wing. His injury was so, I just think that was a decisive moment for the stretch of City season, and we'll see when he comes back. But even City fans felt that would be big. Arsenal fans looked at it and like, oh, if he misses that game, that's big. And um, Ruben Diaz was benched against Liverpool. Um, he hasn't been perfect against high lines. He's not ideal, you know. And it's um, Guardiola has not been fully integrated into the team. He, he's also injured right now. So those are a couple of factors playing in our favor too. And um, I know I've said this a couple of times, but Kyle Walker, man, he he's like kind of a kryptonite for that City team sometimes. It's just... Um, between being the pressure to select him has not been ideal for Man City at all. They're ideally, I think, like in most matchups, maybe not against Vinicius, you, Stones or Akanji with Ruben Diaz and Nathan Ake, like those four is their best back line, I believe. And, um, you know, Walker in possession can be tricky, um, not the best. And, you know, out of possession, his speed is great, but he's not like a, a center back like the others. He can make mistakes. Um, and we saw what Liverpool did to them. I mean, that was one of the most shocking performance in recent years, but it also is just shows what new weaknesses they have. Um, so yeah, I don't agree well, with Liverpool. the, don't give them, I'm not giving them the trophy. I'm not, I'm, I, I refuse to say they're going to retain it. I'm going to, we're going to fight till the final. We're going to give them a better fight guys. It's not, we're not giving our record away. I, I am well, going to speak like a Manchester, Manchester United fan now. So all three of you, if we were given a choice to choose between Manchester City repeating the Champions League, Guardiola equaling Ancelotti's record of uh, four Champions League titles, two for each, or Atletico Madrid winning their first Champions League title ever, or Barcelona winning their sixth, uh, and Xavi Hernandez, of all people, having a Champions League title as a manager to his name. Out of these three scenarios, which one well, would you have to choose? Easily, Xavi is the last last option. Easy. 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 I love Simeone. Alet- Atletico <laughs> all the way. Like, I love uh, I'm not sure I want I, I, I want to live in a world where I can't uh, boast that Atletico have never won a Champions League title. I've, I've been, well, the reason being, I've been recently listening a lot to... Uh, the Spanish football podcast and I'm learning more about the rivalry between Madrid and Atleti and I'm hating them more in the process. (laughs) So (laughs) I have seen, I have seen Barcelona win a Champions League title before. I know how that happens, how that feels. I've seen City do it last year. I know how that feels. I don't want to know how it feels to uh, see, you know, at Atletico, you know, flaunting there. Are, are are they even allowed to go to Sibelis, Kian, if they win? When they that? go, they go to Neptuno, which is a different fountain in Madrid. I'm pretty sure that's like a disgusting fountain that nobody cares about. 
It's unfortunately a nice fountain. It's okay. a nice fountain. Oh, yeah. that's that's the bummer. <laughs> I I think actually Atleti winning just like um you know someone asked me is Liverpool winning the Premier League good for Real Madrid and I'm like yes because that means they have more trophies to an era where we beat them twice or we beat them every time we face them in Europe and I think the same applies to Atleti because um as long as they don't beat us directly like when they get their champion if I shouldn't say when <laughs> if they get their Champions League mm. um I think it makes <laughs> our half decade run of beating them in Europe look even more impressive and um I just think out of those three like. You know, I just don't want to see those Cryfistas winning, man. Like Pep and Barca are just, <laughs> I'm not going there. I, uh, I just can't, you know, it's a, it's an ideological battle at this point. I want to see a team that defends, that plays uh, counter-attacking football. I guess it's not Atleti as much this year. But I mean, in the knockouts, it's it's not going to be some beautiful possession. They're, they're a very high-intensity team. They're not based on like some intricate positionist system. It's still a very up-and-down team. Um, and, you know, it's just an ideological thing for me at that point. And I, I need, by the way, I would be supporting Atleti definitely versus Dortmund because uh, if somehow Mbappe doesn't score six past Barca and they are in the semifinals, I need Atleti to make sure that they don't make it to the final. <laughs> you know what's funny, Mehdi, is that all those scenarios that you chose, whether it's Pep or Simeone, Barca fans are going to celebrate it like a trophy. Yeah, if Simeone so. wins, it's all oh, what Atletico are our, our, our brother... Yeah, won it. They say football. If it's Pep, well, they love Pep. If it's Arteta, they're going to be like, oh, Arteta, Pep's disciple. Barcelona wins another trophy. No, I, I think Atleti is the worst for them, though. I think, like, out of all of those, they'd love to see their little Arteta respawn of Guardiola win. They'd love to see their Guardiola win. I think Tuco or Simeone is still a far cry from um, that. I think Bayern would suck for them. Do we, do we think Bayern have any chance, by the way? Um, like, we. I don't, I feel, I don't trust I, I, Bayern. I, I don't know what it is. But yeah, I don't trust them against. I, I trust them against us, but uh, we would probably beat Bayern if we are in the semifinals. But if it's City versus Bayern, I don't really see see them getting out of that. On uh, that side of the draw, Bayern are the weakest out of the four. I would agree with yeah. that. Yeah, and the betting markets agree, which is it's been so weird. I've been seeing so many people on X saying like Bayern. I'm scared of Bayern. Like what Bayern? Have you been watching them? <laughs> Like have you have you been watching the games they play against small teams? Have you seen them in big games? Like they're like the man started Eric Dyer over Kim Min Jae. I don't know what's wrong with him. Like Tuka Liban for real. Yeah. <laughs> uh to, can we go back to your point about Liverpool and what they did to City earlier? I think so watching that, and the thing is it's not nothing new necessarily because Liverpool against Manchester City, Klopp, Pep era, this has always been the case for as long as I can remember. Maybe there's been a few exceptions here and there, but they always do this to City. They they go at them, they punch them in the mouth, and City just like buckled. They don't know what to do. That Liverpool City game was fascinating because they're both aggressive. And the whole game, part of the reason why it was so entertaining, you couldn't take your eyes off it, was because they would just take turns losing the ball to each other's press and conceding these borderline breakaways. And I just wonder, like, I just think that that it's proven that if you have a good press and you have a good system, you can do that to City. And I personally believe we have the players to do that. But where I'm skeptical is that we don't have the cohesiveness and ingrained identity that Liverpool have to do that as naturally as them because we only do it sometimes and not all the time. So we don't have the cohesiveness and the rhythm to do it. But we can do it. But I just think like, I'd be curious if I can. Yeah, I got the XG I, from all their last few games, and I will just point out: um, no, they haven't done that to City in years. I don't think it's been a game where they created a whole expected goal over City, and like clearly, like two. It was so this last game was um two point two six to one point five six according to Mark stats, and um, to Liverpool. Um, the first one one draw earlier this season was one point seven five Man City, point five Liverpool for context. Um, yeah. Well, and I then, think the, it, it, this one was more akin to like what I've seen from Liverpool against Manchester City and like Champions League during the peak, like you know they played against each other. It well, was, that was it five was, years ago. City had them yeah. figured out, which is why I think it's shocking because the, the there were two 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 draws in twenty one twenty two, and then I think City beat them in nineteen twenty after the pandemic. Obviously, or before that, yes, but um, I mean, remember in seventeen eight and eighteen nineteen, City won two one, and I believe the other game was a draw. And that's how they won the title. So um, 
all things considered, that was actually the best Liverpool like performance against City in years. I don't think, I mean, I don't know how many games City had been outclassed like that in a long time. So um, that's actually quite promising. So I think that that might be the question I'll ask Ancelotti in one of the pregame press conferences is like, did you, were you able to watch that Liverpool City game? And is that something that you would try to emulate because it worked so well? And I'd just be curious to know what he said, because I think in his mind, that would just be too much of a high risk strategy to take. Um, But it would be hella fun to see. But I I think he'll opt for conservatism. Uh, We're still behind on Super Chats, guys. So we're going to do that. Uh, Go back to those. Zeppelin says the only way we win is the Santiago Bernabeu pitch opening up and swallowing the whole Manchester City team. Man, there's a lot of pessimism here. I, I have fantasized about that before. Like some some team just like Jack Grealish running on the left wing and suddenly the pitch collapses. He goes underground. He can't like find Jesus an elevator Christ. to come back. Okay. Also, <laughs> Ederson's out for a month, so uh, you know maybe I know Stefan Ortega is supposed to be a good backup goalie, but who knows? Maybe the Bernabeu swallows up Stefan Ortega. Yeah, like, well, Federico Verde, let's go. Oh, UEFA decides that on Champions League nights. We don't, we don't, we, oh no, I don't think. Uh, I just oh. want to see Pep complain about the closed roof. I just want to see that. Just also, our the... pitch is trash. We should use that to our advantage at home. That's true. <laughs> yeah, Our pitch is terrible. A trash pitch is worse when you're the better team, but when you're the worst team, oh my God, it's a godsend. Uh, Somnath Bose says, I felt last year we tried to press City and our press was awful. Instead, we should have set up for a counterattack, would have given us a fighting chance. Did that happen? I mean, I, I don't remember not, that. Not really, not really, no. Uh, Zafri says, They already benched Mbappe. Imagine he does. <laughs> Imagine if Lucho benches Mbappe against Barca. <laughs> Uh, I I would I would almost yeah. respect the 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 obnoxiousness. Um, yeah, Marco Asensio, like let's let's go show us that you're a <laughs> Madridista. Rise up to the occasion for once. But yeah, just for the last super jet, I would say I think we should do a little bit of the reverse at points. We need to um, press them a lot more aggressively when the game is still even. Like Carlo sometimes waits till we are down, just kind of send the yeah. kitchen to get teams. We need to keep a higher mid block in possession um i mean out of possession and yeah we need to actually set up so that like i mean i don't remember like i remember halan taking like three shots at courtois in the first 10 minutes of the etihad game um we can't have that and that was because we were sitting back and even going back to two years ago we didn't press them until the last 15 minutes at the Bernabeu. yeah i mean we did it i guess we played the up and down game at the etihad but we pressed them maybe 15 minutes successfully in in two years and so you know, I would just say the inverse of that super chat. The he, issue he with Pep over. is like he's not rigid anymore with his approaches. He 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 is more malleable than ever. Uh, we have seen in these ties, mm-hmm. like even in 2019-20 when we lost un, under Zidane against Pep, uh, he played like Gabriel Jesus as the left midfielder and Kevin De Bruyne as the striker for most part of the first mm-hmm. leg. Like so, he he does these things where he can adjust certain things. And uh, another problem is he knows Real Madrid so well. He knows Carlos so well because they have played so much. We have played so much against them. It's There is nothing really to scout or there is nothing really secret about how at least we are going to approach. There are probably things, uh, more mysterious things about City's approach, but there are less things mysterious about our approach. I think that's one of the things. Our game is more predictable to them. So he can adjust certain things according to that. Uh, one thing that in the real deal uh, account we recently saw, like where do each remaining team concede the most expected threat? And for City, it came out as uh, like their right side of their defense or the left side of the attacking side. So where Vinny would be attacking, where Jude would be making those overloads, where Kamavinga would be. Or Kyle uh, Walker in- gets exposed. Yeah, and this this also like irks me, man. Like, why does Kyle Walker like catch up to Vinicius in a sprint? This this should not be possible. This should not happen. Why does that even happen? <laughs> I mean, yeah, listen, with, that's all he with does. The, that's all he does. Hopefully, we, well, we Walker is the play. fastest city player. Did you know that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's, that's true. Yeah. Like even even if now like he loses a bit of that speed, but well, that's the thing. Like last year, I wasn't expecting 
he was going to deliver such a complete performance against Vinny and then that happened. Like, that's one of the big keys for this game, really. Like, Vinicius making sure that that doesn't happen again. And then also, just to comment with regards to the pressing, like, one of the things, one of the lessons that can be learned from Aleti is just to be a bit apart, opportunistic about these things. Because, like, Aleti goes, like, press can press, f- like, for the first 15, 20 minutes, uh, kind of a, kind of take like a jolt scare out of you, uh, and then they can go back and sit in the and sit a bit deeper, and that's that would because I it is true that Real Madrid does not have the structure to press for 60, 70, 80, 90 minutes, but there should be really enough structure and at least full concentration for the players to do this for say phases of fifteen minutes. Even that would already be would already be an improvement and just combine that with like more counterattacking faces. Um did we have any other thoughts on uh the other matchups? Oh, City just, just uh, City just uploaded the highlights of the 4-0. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean we're we're I mean we're all the Madrid accounts are talking about the 3-1-2. It is what it is. <laughs> uh, but um what's it called? Another factor um small to consider is that the main difference between city this year and last year is phil foden to something else um but um you know i hope brahim shows his childhood friend who's boss uh, and phil foden plays on the right uh more more it, right right so. but um it can vary but right now it's on the right like you know pep could easily throw bernardo there if he sees something on the right on our mm-hmm. left back zone that he wants to exploit but yeah phil has been playing wide right um but he, he's been good through the middle when De Bruyne's out. He's been good across all positions. He's been City's best player this season, you could argue, along with, um, you know, Rodri's been great. The defense, defenders have been great. But Phil Foden has the most goal, goal contributions, I think, for City this season. Like, There's just clogged that uh, Lucho was the coach when Barca beat PSG 6-1. And he's, he's going to be on the other dugout this time. Yeah, I'm man, I'm, I'm so pissed off. He's going to do that, like, Pep thing, like, oh, my Barca, like, here, I'll, I'll bench Mbappe, uh, Asensio will play in goal, something like that. <laughs> Having Brahim also makes me just a little more confident for this tie. I feel like he's a good player for that matchup, just um, just dribble into space, release the ball quick. Like, he's very tricky. City wish they kept him, to be honest. Like, imagine if they had him right now. That would be a very good unit. Like City wanted he- to keep him. He, I mean, he... Yeah, yeah, he wasn't having a chance to play at all, like coming up in that team. But I uh, yeah. like it'll be interesting to reflect on the bench. I mean, the bench unit has been so important for us in the past Champions League run two years ago. I'd be curious to know where Kamavinga sits in the pecking order if everyone's healthy right now in a big game because Mendy wasn't available last year. He is this mm-hmm. year and he's playing better. You can't bench Cruz or Fetty or Jude or Vinny. Um, I think are are we all on the same page that we don't want to see that experiment again where it's five midfielders? I kind of I was wrong about it, but I kind of liked it when I first saw the lineup against Leipzig. But um, I think it's going to be more leading towards Rodrigo starting instead of seeing that. Yeah, I I at this point Mm -hmm. I'm at the point like I'm at the point where every time Carlo tries to be like big brain something, no, please just stick to what we've seen works throughout the season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So, oh, there is an account also... name that says Rude Bellingham. That's a great name. Carlo also doesn't. <laughs> yeah. uh, Carlo also, I think the difference is five midfielders under Zidane. We're like extrapolating that to Carlo, but they're just two different things. Like, if this was Zidane, five midfielders might make sense. Like, we, uh, we still did really well for the vast majority of the first leg against Man City under Zidane until Ramos and that little mishap at the end. But we did a good job keeping the game at bay. Carlo's not that type of coach. He seems very mid-block, counter, give up some chances, or go all in, remontada. But it's very rarely like we have this under control at nil-nil. And um, we just have to accept that we're going to have heart attacks, roller coasters, blood pressure is going to go up. You know, just make sure you get your blood pressure, get your workouts in so... Your resting heart rate doesn't fluctuate too much during the tie. It's, I mean, we got to, there's going to be an element of two years ago. I mean, this is Carlo's one weakness, I think. Um, just uh, at, at even game states, it's very rarely, it's either domination or uncom- like discomfort until we're down and then we dominate. It's very rarely like smooth ride. Um, 
And man, yeah. it just got worse with five midfielders. It's like there was no possibility of control. Jose? And and this is backed up by the XG, by the way. Like the worst, like Real Madrid's worst XG difference, uh, at least this season, is in even game states. Then a goal gets scored by either Real Madrid or the opponent, and then actually the XG difference gets wide, like gets wider. So it means that this team reacts a bit more outside of an e of an even game game state. Yeah, it, that, they need it. to get poked or or instigate yeah. something themselves to get going. Um, exactly. So. I don't know if you guys saw the the bookies and the because they did the update thing because so we were second favorites before the draw now we're third behind Arsenal so it goes City Arsenal us so that's one thing that changed no matter what if we get to the final the storyline is going to be crazy because it's either Barca which has never happened in a final before a classical final or Atletico which is a long history or PSG which the story writes itself. Then we do the Ajax thing. We win the title and Mbappe celebrates with us. We say like, gracias, Kilian. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that someone brings that 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 meme back. Just for, or for if Dortmund time. makes the final, we could too. Like, thanks for developing Jude. Gracias, Jude. <laughs> gracias, Jude. Uh, guys, anything else? We were an hour, no 10 super, minutes now. No more super chats? No more no. super chats. We've exhausted the super chats. Um, a lot of people join, I'm assuming join late because the viewer count just kept going up and up. You probably missed a lot. So we did a lot of tactical analysis of what we need to do this year, what we need to avoid that we didn't avoid last year, other matchups, reactions in real time, everything, etc. cetera. Um, it's this, the whole thing will be posted. You guys can listen to it or watch it wherever you're consuming things. We'll be back tomorrow for Osasuna post game, which seems kind of like boring compared to this discussion, but we will be here uh, right at the final whistle or shortly after. And then the rest is going to be all over on patreon.com slash managing where we'll be, we'll be very busy next week. We also have two very special guests next week. I won't spoil it yet. Although if you're a member, you already know who those two people are. Uh, so join YouTube memberships or patreon.com slash managing Madrid. And what else? That's it. Any you guys have anything to plug before we wrap it up here? No? Nope. All right, cool. Great chatting let's, with you guys. Let's Thanks. Fast, for let's fast and speak it into existence. Yeah. Lots of fasting, lots yes. of uh positive thinking and optimism until from now until uh the first and second legs. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in live. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Thanks, guys. Peace.